am so honored. I, can't, I just can't even tell you how honored and blessed I am to have you here today. This is a dream come true for me. And I'm so thankful that you took your Saturday morning to come and spend time with us today. I just give you a round of applause. And I just want to say that this is the start of your dream. I want to talk today about a subject that's very near and dear to my heart, and that's the birth of your personal dream. Have you ever conceived? I've had seven, possibly eight, pregnancies, two or three miscarriages, and five living children. They are my greatest achievement, and though they wonder whether I love them or not when I make them do their chores, they are my greatest joy. I have one grandchild and had the joy of watching her mother, my oldest, go through pregnancy, and it was like a rebirth for me. And they are the fulfillment of my dream. In life, we all have dreams, and those dreams are birthed in our heart by us and by God. They come from our parents. My mother was a singer, and she instilled in me the desire to be a performer. They come from our standards. They come from our upbringing, our culture, and our surroundings, and our natural abilities. They sometimes come from our insecurities. But however they come, some are formed and birthed, and some are never made manifest in our lives. When I was little, I wanted to be a ballerina, lifted high in the air by handsome men in prince-like tights. Right? Then I wanted to be a stewardess. Somehow they seemed like the most beautiful, desirable women. See, I was a child of the 60s, just at the dawn of the pre-feminist era. And one thing I never wanted to be was a housewife. <laughs> you see, my mother worked full time and had a career. And that was my example. Though I loved family and wanted children, I always saw myself as a powerful, successful, wealthy woman of some sort. I toyed with being a hairstylist, where you see I had a natural ability and passion for hair. Can't you tell? <laughs> I'd be rocking it, huh? <laughs> now, y'all don't know. It was about four curls and some hairspray this morning. <laughs> and later during my pregnancy with my oldest, I actually did step behind the chair as a hairstylist, and I did it for several years. I also made my rounds doing music and theater, and I actually went to college on a BFA for musical theater and did some performing at the college level and did some repertory theater and thought I was on my way to Broadway. But when I met my husband, now y'all know you go to school to get that MRS degree, right? Because whatever goal you had, he became the main goal. How many of y'all can bear witness? Can I get a witness? Love will make you do crazy things. And when I met my husband, I knew that my destiny was not going to be New York City, but it was beside him. And so I went. And by the time we were seniors in college, my husband was touted to go pro in the NFL. Now let me tell you, this was not a stranger than fiction kind of story. He was very talented, but he wasn't, hmm, what shall I say? He wasn't the best player on the field, but he was the most determined. 
So we had a hope and a prayer that the NFL just might come calling. But we didn't know. Lo and behold, in the last few weeks of the senior year, we began to get calls from NFL teams. And he went into the NFL draft as an 11th round pick by the LA Rams. Now, I, I share this because they don't have 11 rounds anymore. And it was such a miracle for him to even get touted and be considered because we were in a small Division three, Division two, three school. So we had no idea what the future held for us. But off he went, and me with him. And go figure, the very thing that I never wanted to be is exactly what I became. <laughs> Funny how life has twists and turns. The one thing that you think would never satisfy you turns out to be your greatest joy. And so I crafted a life a life of changing diapers, a life of feeding babies and washing clothes and cleaning house. And I loved it. And there I stayed like Snow White, whistling while I work, <laughs> writing songs while I wash the dishes. Like Snow White, I gave my faith to my husband's dreams, and I didn't care about myself. I lived on the edge. We moved 13 times in seven years with two kids in tow. He was cut, released, picked up, drafted, traded, and by the time we were done, we were stuck in Washington, D.C. with the Washington Redskins. And no job. No security, no idea what would become of us. But we lived the dream. We went after it. And I, and I pushed him and I prayed for him. I prophesied to him. I said, honey, you can do it. I had my pom-poms out. I was like Becky on the cheer squad. Go, Terry, go, Terry, go, Terry. <laughs> and I never forget, I sat in the office of a beautiful lady who happened to be here today. Diane, wave at everybody. This is my friend and my health counselor, Dr. Diane Wendell. And Diane sat with me and didn't know me from Adam. And we went to her for some nutritional support and she began to speak to the future. And we were a young football family and she said, your destiny is greater than this. And she said, and mama, I can hear you saying, what about me? But God said that he's going to build a platform and you're going to be standing on it. I thank you, woman of God, for your obedience. Because I'm telling you that 17 years later, everything that she said came to pass. I didn't even want my own dreams anymore and I didn't regret it. I lived for it. You see, in a way, it took the pressure off of me. Pressure to perform, pressure to fulfill everybody's expectations. I was a type A, honey. I was a firstborn. I was that kid that made straight A's and I better not drop them. I was a merit scholar at 18. I was highly touted and I had a lot of expectation on my life to the degree that it almost made me want to run the other way. So I prayed for him, and I nurtured my children, and I lived through all the ups and downs of the NFL and later Hollywood. And it was hard. It was hard. But glamour has a price. I woke up on my 40th birthday. 40, y'all. Forte. Halfway, <laughs> meaning you better do it if you're going to do it. You better be about it because you got one foot in, right? I'm halfway to heaven, I better do it. That's for somebody. 
I realized that I needed to live my own dreams. My dreams. Dreams long thought dead. Dreams of owning businesses. Dreams of making it in show business. Dreams of doing events like this. Speaking and traveling. And I said to myself, what am I going to do at 40? I said, God, are you kidding me now? Are you kidding me? I'm old. I got five kids. Who has five kids? Who? I'm not a Mormon or a Catholic, but glory be to God, I just kept popping them out. But I look pretty good right now, though, don't I? Am I working it? Whoop! I thank God for Spanx every day. Can I get a witness? Thank you, Jesus, for latex in every form. Fiber in me and holding me together like Jesus. I began going out on acting auditions, speaking, taking classes, when it suddenly occurred to me, if my perfect dream came true, that I would never see my kids. My son, wave Isaiah, was only three at the time. And well, you know, that, that didn't sit well with me. Because you see, I was a typecast. They wanted to put me in a legal drama, in a medical drama, put a jacket on me and call me a power suit. And a legal drama is a one hour show, which means an 18 hour day. And every time I went out, they said, you'd be great for this. So willing to be open to suggestion, I began to craft myself in the direction as a dramatic actress. But I couldn't live with the possibility of that fulfillment. I couldn't breathe thinking that my kids wouldn't see me Monday through Friday before they went to school or after they went to bed. I prayed for these kids. I fasted for these kids. I asked God for these kids. And now I was going to give them over to a nanny for 16 hours a day to live my dream. And I said, I can't. So I died again. And I began, I died again. I said, God, I won't do this. If I have to go wait until they're all out of the house, it's just what I'm going to do. Because I'm a whole hog. When I'm sold out, I'm one way or the other. I don't know if that's dyslexia or something, I don't know, but I, but, but I couldn't picture myself running that jaunt. I couldn't see them without me. I had a working mama and I missed her. I had a daddy who passed when I was six years old and my mother busted her butt. And I missed her. And I said to myself, if I can help it, Jesus, I'll put them first. So I began a journey of writing. I was just journaling. I was just taking my quiet time with the Lord every day. And I began to craft a vision of something I could do with my kids. And I suddenly had this idea that I could write myself a show. You know, they always say that if you don't see what you want, go make it. And I started with a concept. My husband, being a pro ball player, had descended into normal life and was now working as a security guard and a bouncer and a, and a file holder and a temp after making multiple figures. We were very normal. I thought, wouldn't that be funny? That'd be a great sitcom. That'd be a great show. Ex-football player with four daughters. Holy cow, that's comedy all by itself. <laughs> right? 
And, and he's, he's not in the big league, you know, he's working at the car dealer, he's making the daily grind, and, it, and, and, he, and he's got to get used to the fact that people keep walking up to him going, aren't you that guy who used to play in the NFL? What are you doing down here? And life has a funny way of acting that out because that's exactly what happened to my husband when he came to Hollywood. He was a security guard making $15 an hour while I stayed home with my kids. $15 an hour, we went from several hundred thousand dollars a year to 35000 a year. And he humbled himself and he took on work to feed his family. So I thought we could find the funny in that. So I named the character after myself. Her name was Rebe. And then each of my kids had a character. So Tara was Sarah. And Nene was Ray Ray. It wasn't very creative. Because <laughs> I don't fancy myself as a screenwriter, but I had a dream. And this took me about three months to write. And honey, you know, they say you're supposed to type it in 110 Roman and it shouldn't be longer than 120 pages. You know, they're all this, they have whatever. I scribbled it into a journal that said, trust in the Lord on the front. <laughs> that I bought at the Target store down the street for $3.99. <laughs> and I, as I wrote and I wrote and I wrote, I said, God, this would be great if I could get my kids agents and I could get them headshots, and then we could all go on auditions, and then maybe they'd cast every one of us in this show, and we could be on TV together. That's really highly unlikely. <laughs> Do you understand that the chances of every one of your kids having enough talent to be cast by a big Hollywood agent let alone get the part after 100,000 auditions where you take how many no's? Any actors in the room? Actors, musicians? Right? How many no's do we take? All of them, right? But I had a dream. And I said, with God, all things are possible. And he said, if I name it, I can claim it. And he said, if I want it to ask. But I put the book down after I finished the final draft of my first pilot. And I never touched it again. I don't know why I didn't feel the urge. Now maybe that's lazy, but something in me just didn't want to do any more with that project. And time went on and I had, oh, a couple more kids. I just kept living. And one day, I got a phone call from a beautiful black woman who is kick butt in Hollywood. Her name is Robbie Reed. And I met Robbie while worshiping at a Bible study with my good friend Sophia Luke, who's here today. Sophia, where are you? Wave your arm. There's beautiful Sophia. She runs a beautiful actors and artists Bible study in Hollywood called Giant Killers. If you see her, give her a hug and check out her ministry. It's amazing. And I'm at this Bible study just praising the Lord because we get down at Giant Killers. We get down. We lay on the floor. We roll on the floor. We scream and shout and we get it out. And I saw Robbie sitting in a chair and I went, holy crap, that's Robbie Reed. So I had a choice to make right then. W was I going to be Hollywood? Or was I going to be Hollywood? And I never forget having that urge to be just a little bit tame in my praise. And God said, you better be yourself, Rebecca. And I kicked off my shoes, and I began to shout and dance and worship him like nobody was watching me. Because I said, what I care? She ain't casting me in nothing, no way. I hope she... <laughs> and God bless Robbie. 
she's like my mother in the spirit. She's a beautiful woman of God. But I didn't know that at the time. I get a call from this amazing woman, completely randomly. And I'm telling you, I'd been through hell that week. My nanny quit on me that week. I had all these meetings. I was working on a music project. I had meetings for two weeks straight with producers and uh, songwriters and, and ministry things that I was doing. And this lady just bailed on me. And I'm like stuck at home like, what am I going to do? Oh, my God. I, gotta, I have all this stuff to do. And I had to like drop my life. And I had two children in preschool, little bitty bitty at home. So, and they were being like kind of schooled at home by the lady. So now I had to cancel all my meetings, sit with my kids, and, and take on the role that she had been assuming for almost five years. Now, you know when someone's that entrenched in your life, that's a very big hole. Okay? And I sat there thinking, all hell is breaking loose, Jesus. I must be getting ready to get blessed. I must just something, just something's got to be coming my way. Because, honey, when that wind is blowing, the devil knows you close. Can I just say that? Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. If you're not taking a hit, you're going the wrong way. If you are not going through nothing, thank him for it because you're probably about to. Just enjoy the season. Enjoy the wind and the waves while they're calm, honey, because when the Lord speaks and he says, let's go to the other side, here come the devil. Here he come. Get your gear. Get your, get your armor. Get your sword. Just, just pull it out, just like Wonder Woman. Say, whoo, Wonder Woman. Da, 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 da. Wait, and she did a little spin. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Right? And she could block those bullets. Tie you up with the lasso of truth, make you tell the truth. That's the Holy Ghost right there. <laughs> so I'm sitting in my office thinking, what the hey? Now, you know that's not what I felt like saying. <laughs> you talk about wanting to choke somebody. That's a whole nother testimony. This lady loved my kids, but she went through some stuff. Long in the short, God was on the move for me. And two days after this, I was at BET's office, surrounded by the president and her staff. Can I, now, When I tell you that God will take you to the palace from wherever you are, I am telling you the truth. I was a lonely housewife, and the day after that, I was the executive producer of my own television show. Now, let me say this. The amazing thing about this story is that the show was never bought, sold, or pitched, but it went to God only. After seeing me at a Bible study, Robbie Reed called me out of the blue and said, can you get your husband and get to BET's offices tomorrow? She's the head of talent at BET, but is also lead casting agent on every major black film you've ever seen in the last 30 years, and when she calls, you come running. And here is the president of programming and all her staff surrounding us in the conference room, offering, offering, offering us a show. Now, can I break it down to you that an offer is reserved for the biggest stars? Tom Cruise gets offers. Will Smith gets offers. When you're an unknown talent, you get a thousand rejections before you even get to be an extra, before you get to be a series regular, before you get to do a little walk on and say you was in the, in the show with George Clooney. You, do you understand? Do you understand, my husband probably spent 10 years acting before anybody knew his name. He was the guy from Friday, the guy from White Chicks. Do you understand, do you get this? Off 
Oscars. He was still auditioning after doing hit movies. And here I was, a little nobody in their mind. And I went to the front of the line. I want to say this. And, and here we are, playing ourselves, working together, telling our story, just like I wrote in my journal two years before. The script that no one saw that never went to network, never saw the light of day except in God's drawing room. And two years from the time I put pen to paper, I was starring on television. Glory be to God. With my kids and my spouse, our show, our show ran for two years. We had 1.8 million viewers and went worldwide with MTV International and is still playing all over the world. Talk about a resurrection. At 21, I laid down my dreams and I spent 20 years making beds and changing diapers. And at 44, with no prior experience except college and repertory theater, people knew me worldwide. And I travel and I speak. And I've had the opportunity to preach on television to a worldwide audience. From Singapore to South Africa, my friends and my friends and my followers, and they tweet me and they say, go with God, Rebecca. And I want to say to you, don't ever give up on yourself. God has a plan. I never thought I would do TV. He has increased me far beyond anything I dreamed for myself and will yet do so. There can be miracles when you believe. Though hope is frail, somehow you will. Somehow you will. You will when you believe. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Dream Girl. And I'll be with you again. God bless you.